Welcome to the TV and T podcast. I'm Adriana. And I'm Selena. And we are two sisters that have decided to let the internet into the conversations that we have about TV and pop culture over endless cups of tea. In our house, the reoccurring questions are, is it tea time? To which the answer is always yes. yes. And what are we watching? So pour yourself a cup and get ready to get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode, TV and Tea. Yes, yes. How are you guys doing this week? How is everybody feeling? I wonder. I hope you're well. Yeah, me too. (laughs) As always, what's going on, Cece? Tell me, tell me. You know, not much, you guys. I've been doing well at backyard renovation, focusing on that. That's going great. Okay. I got my mom's support, finally. She's on board. I think she needed a project too and she didn't realize it. And I know. Because she started to rehang the pictures upstairs. So mm-hmm. I just think she's motivated all of a sudden. I like I that for her. Good it's, job, Elaine. It's the Sag energy. We get these random bursts of motivation and energy and it's just like I'm fixing everything. And we're on the same I feel like we're all like that. Yeah. That's how I was with my room in the beginning of quarantine. I was just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> crazy it's nice energy. to have a project, especially in times like this. So... Hey, if you want to redo your room, redo your backyard, go ahead and do it. Home Depot's open, Home Goods is open. Get it's into true. it. Yeah. It's true. I need new sheets. I still haven't tackled my sheets, but I'm going to do that. I just I went back to work this week and That's right. it was like so nice to be out. Like I went in yesterday. I'm just going in once a week now. Um and then working from home the rest of the days and it's just it was like nice to be back around people and to see my coworkers and just to like walk into the corner store that's next door and like buy myself Doritos. It was just like nice to be out and seemingly normal, even though I was in the stupid mask and I couldn't breathe <laughs> and I was like out of breath. I told you people <laughs> need to work. Yeah. Like I, okay, I have to admit I was unemployed before the pandemic hit and I was loving it. I was like, working is so ghetto. It is. But now I'm at the point where it's like, wow, I miss going to work. I miss going to school because at least when I was unemployed, I had that. Yeah. I can say I have, I, I, before the pandemic, I was like, oh my God, like I miss working from home because I worked from home for like two years before that and I love just being able to like work in bed and work on the couch but I have actually missed going out and I think this kind of like hybrid like working from home working in the office is going to be nice and I think that's the sweet spot I think having somewhere to go once or twice a week but like not having to wake up every single morning to get there is nice I think that's the sweet spot Mm -hmm. I'm gonna like really push for this to be like forever (laughs) if my boss is listening um because I like it I like yeah because sometimes you do just want to like lay in bed and like write your emails and like just chill yeah um and this morning like I had stuff to finish up and I was just like at the kitchen table and it was nice but it was just like nice to get out of the house last night yesterday I mean I know it probably felt so good I need to yeah It was, like, nice to, like, be back in my routine of, like, making my tea at my desk and, like, having my lunch. It was just, like, nice. I start school again on Monday, Mm -hmm. all remote, but I'm thinking I'm going to have, like, a day where I go to campus and I study, maybe go to the library. Library. Campus is open, and I want an outing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I think I'm going to do. You should do that. Yeah, and that actually reflects my Quote this week. It's another high school musical one. What are you going? For? I don't Did know. Did you watch them recently? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, a, a high school musical applies to everything for me right Apparently. now. Apparently. Yeah. So my quote this week is from the second movie and it is by Sharpay. And she Queen says, Icon Legend. Queen Icon Legend. She says, It's out with the old and in with the new. Goodbye, shades of gray. Hello, skies of blue. Yes. <laughs> because that's how I'm feeling, you know. School is about to start a new semester, new leave, and kind of a new season. Because in other places, fall is about to start. Mm-hmm. In Miami, we don't have seasons. No. But, you know. It'll like, get less hot by Thanksgiving. Nothing. Yeah. Um, 
I like Halloween. Yeah. Halloween week weekend is always the weekend it gets cold in Miami. Like that's when you know like Ah, something's happening. <laughs> yes, and then you're in your hofit in Winwood, and you're like, I'm cold. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah, which I guess won't be happening this year, but this is still my favorite time of the year, and I'm excited for, like, the new. I'm gonna, you know, be doing new things. I love that for you. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Um, okay, so my quote this week is from my favorite show, Gilmore Girls, and Rory says, a little nervous break at breakdown can really work wonders for a girl and <laughs> let me tell you guys I had like last weekend it was I don't know I was just like sad we had some family things going on and then this weekend I was just like not feeling life or people or my life I was just like I don't know I was just blue I was just in a funk. You were so over it. I was done. <laughs> <laughs> and Kim Kardashian voice. I'm so over it. I was <laughs> on Sunday, like I was having I had <laughs> I was having some car trouble and so I was trying to get that resolved. And then I locked my keys in my car and then it was just like I had to call AAA to come and open the car. And I was just like so frustrated that I literally started crying and I could not stop for hours. I sat on my bathroom floor for like an hour and a half, just bawling. Like I like literally had a breakdown. It's the Pisces because every Pisces in my life is going through it right now. I, I mean, I can't understand. I, I can't even explain to you like how much I cried. Like mommy was like, are you okay? Like, what's the problem? Like, is something happening? Like, let me help. Like you can yeah. tell me. I was like, Nothing is wrong. Like, I, can I just be fr sad and frustrated? She's like, frustrated about what? Sad about what? I like, I, it, I'm sure that she was probably like, are you going to kill yourself tonight? Like, oh what's happening? God. Like, she was so worried. And my aunt was like, I had to say a prayer for you. And, you know, I just, I just got on my knees last. And I was just like, I'm fine. Like, the next day I literally woke up and I was like, okay, we're done with that. Like, but the thing is that everyone is so dramatic right now. Like, mommy and auntie <laughs> are already dramatic. And because, like, no one really has anything going on, the <laughs> littlest <laughs> thing happens and they're just like, oh my oh God. Oh my God. Yeah. It was so bad. But I just, I had to, like, melt down and just, like, allow myself to melt down so I could just, like, come back. Like, I literally woke up Monday morning and I was like, okay we're good and my mom was like are you okay I was like don't don't even do that like we're not doing that my aunt came in she was like how are you doing I was like no we're fine I'm done like it was a, I'm over it uh, um but yeah like I had I had a serious breakdown but I just feel like brand new like now I'm just like okay I'm like I've gotten so much done this week like there was all this stuff and like paperwork I've been like putting off and like just like not getting back to emails that I needed to return and like Stuff that I needed to do that I was just like avoiding and I like got it all done this week. Like, I don't know. I really just feel like brand new and it's like, whew. You know what I also did? I put myself on a schedule. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So it's not working with the wake up thing yet, but <laughs> I am waking up and doing the things I have to do. That's good. Yeah. Um, I kind of have like a routine that I follow. So whether I wake up at like... 10 a.m. or earlier or 1 a.m. or later like I still do my my routine mm. you know like mm. I always stick to those things like mm. I never you know people that like they'll, they're depressed or they're sad or they're like feeling funky and they just like they don't wash their face and they don't like clean or, like I oh, still okay. like do everything like I'm so like anal and like mm, mm, neurotic about everything that I still have to do the things that I have to like or I see earth in your chart <laughs> or like that will throw me off even more if I don't do that then I feel like a complete and utter psycho oh, okay I see you know yeah I'm not very go with the flow person <laughs> I've been going with the flow for like the past nine months so <laughs> um it was like school and work that had me kind of on a schedule where I had to do things by a certain time uh -huh. and I'm realizing those outside things like they help center me like I'm not a centered person so I need outside things mm. to center me but like, if you just sense. leave me up to myself I'm just gonna be like mm, do I feel like it's like yeah not really I'm just like yeah I'm not really a centered person either mm -hmm. like I realize it's a it's a Pisces things for sure that why are we on this tangent <laughs> like I can I can live in a bubble like you know these bubbles that people are in like my if I'm not 
careful like I will literally like think myself into like disillusionment like a like I <laughs> like I can just create like a fantasy of like not that's just like not grounded in anything that's actually happening in my life and like this is I, always <laughs> so weird when a Pisces explains this to me they're just like yeah I just like disconnect from life and the world and I'm in my own world and and I think like everything's fine and I know like right beyond the bubble is like complete chaos that is my actual <laughs> life like my responsibilities like things like everything everything is just like right outside of that bubble and but I'm in here like <laughs> and I'm happy I'm like it's very weird like it that's so funny yeah best friend cat goes into <laughs> this you're not the only one anyways let's get into it yeah let's get into the actual <laughs> episode of what we're gonna be talking about this week so we I don't think we watched a show that looked quite like this yet mm -hmm. I don't think we have um so we started watching Hannah it's on Amazon Prime and I've been wanting to watch this. The second season just came out, I think it was like a couple weeks ago. So I've been wanting to watch this. So we watched the first season. That's what we're going to review. And then we'll watch the second season. I mean, I want to watch it immediately. It took everything it in right me now. not to watch it. Because I, I started watching it on like Sunday night when I was sad. Um, as a distraction. <laughs> and so I could have finished the second season by now. Oh, yeah. Um but we'll watch that and probably review it next week i think i could have watched it too i wanted to continue okay so first of all i binged season one in one day like yeah. a straight shot uh -huh. and i wasn't tired when i finished it so i was like oh maybe i should start season two but i knew you were gonna go to work the next day so i was like yeah. oh no let me not do it okay but yeah i'm so excited for season two i want to watch so it am i and i've heard it's very different from season one so i'm excited for that okay but let's just give you a synopsis it is about a young girl she's 15 she's 15 and she has been living in the polish forest with her father they live out in a cave they live off the land and he is training her to be a super killer like to defend super herself to take them down you know if anything bad is to come like she'll be able to fight them off and um as the first episode starts to unfold you start to see like he has these flashbacks of his her mother and him stealing her from a facility um where there's a bunch of other babies and he escapes with the with the little girl with the baby and the mother and you know they're on the run but they're being hunted down by uh, the you know security at the facility and the mother ends up dying he ends up getting away and that's how they come to be living in the forest so you don't know why what the story is there but it f unfolds over the course of the season and the cast is really good so the good. the father is played by i don't know his name but the guy from altered carbon and suicide squad tall hot tall Chew. and hot i don't think <laughs> that's how i'm gonna describe him because he's tall and he's hot <laughs> i don't know his name but he's a daddy and a half oh like, my god i, have to I look love up his him name. i love him too and he always plays these roles that are like these military men that are fierce and and just like badass but he's got such a like a soft side and he's very gentle too. He is um, a gentle, loving father, but he will kick some ass if he needs to. Yes. I, I love it. His name is Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. Yes. Um, love him. And so she is starting to like get to that age where she's becoming like curious about like why she's in the forest, where her mother is, what happened to her, like you know why do they live in isolation yes and things start popping off when i have to say this her skin catch fire <laughs> that is a jamaican saying for or, like you see a guy and you're just like oof like, your just hormones just it. surge you know yeah. that you know when you like see a hot guy and you're just like 
You feel the feeling. Your skin catch fire. Yeah, your skin like, catch fire. You just like I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying to get to know you. So like yes. she ventures off into the woods, into a area that she's not supposed to be in. Yes. And she meets a boy, mm-hmm. and she's just like, hmm, I don't understand what's going on, but I like it, and I like him, and they start hanging out, and he takes her to this satellite, and it's just like, girl you are dumb and i know you are dumb because your daddy keeping you in the woods for a yes. reason uh-huh. anyhow you get close to a satellite and the people find you like you're done for yeah so the satellite like there's a an alarm that goes off and police come out to investigate like why is there an alarm going off and so she escapes but she like warns her father she's like you know someone saw us yada 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 and lo and behold this sets off a chain of events the um a woman that she's not immediately identified but she's cia is like they're like you know this girl this age in this area um was found da, 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 da. we think it's from the incident from 15, 15 years, years ago. ago so they're like she's like send a team whatever so you know helicopters come in men are are chasing them down they have to escape their cave and she ends up like her father is about to be captured Mm -hmm. and so she ends up kind of like turning herself in so he can escape they have like a whole plan you know meet here to each other meet here send a postcard here you know do this do that so they're like on the run so she's captured and you know they're interrogating her and she is like you know i want to i want to see this person and you know they're she's having a conversation with someone that they've sent in to be to pretend to be this woman that she asks for and she ends up killing her killing all the guards and she's escapes bad from the center that she's being detained in i gotta say she is a badass assassin and then yes. as the show goes on you start to see that it's not just her training she has like abilities that yes. she's really quick she it has a lot of endurance she can hear and see really far and it's just like what is going on this little girl was a government experiment or what like i want to yes. know and they don't really reveal it until the latter episodes what's yes. going on with okay her. so i had actually one major problem with the show okay and okay so the rest of the show you're she's on this journey she's trying to get back to her father they eventually do she meets a friend and her family's kind of like takes her in and you know it's like oh we'll drop you she's like telling them like oh i'm traveling on my own i'm gonna go meet up with my father back in you know back in our home and um you know they're driving her from like one country to the next because they're on a road trip and you know all these different things happen she finally gets reunited with her father and he's got a whole plan in place because he is trying to kill the the woman that is hunting them down from the cia Mm -hmm. but my major issue with the show is that there throughout the show there's many times where someone's like does she know the truth and he's saying no and then someone she gets captured again and the woman is like will i'll tell you who you are i'll tell you what happened i'll tell you like everything and that moment of like telling her what and who she is never truly happens and and that was a problem for me because like call me stupid but like i want to know the plot like i want there to be that scene where there's like the evil overlord and it's she's like she's in her office and it's dimly lit and there's an assistant sitting at the table and she's like turned around and she's smoking a cigarette and she's looking out a window and she's like you know they never thought that i could do it when when i told them that (laughs) the plan they didn't believe in me and yet we were able to you know get these children and enhance their dna and da 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 and we were using them for this and and this is why we're experimenting on them and this is why we're training them and they're gonna go out and they're gonna do our dirty work but i feel like that did happen like in the last couple episodes when she was back with the dad and he explained everything no he didn't yeah he did because we saw the flashback of him oh well i don't know if they tell her necessarily i think they kind of do but you see the flashback of 
him recruiting the mother okay. to get her into the facility. Okay. You see them experimenting. You see but they never, being born. They never show them experimenting. They just show Hannah being born. And like there's these team of doctors, but you don't really know like I don't I don't think they He said mutations. They try out they tried out mutations on the, the embryos and the fetuses and just to see what would happen. And then the kids ended up being born with certain abilities. And the program got shut down because obviously Hannah and the dad and the mom escaped. I don't know. I just feel like they didn't lay that. Like, I just wanted that moment when it was very clear. I feel like they they did it with, like, here's, a, here's like, one sentence and, like, infer what you will. And it's like he got the file and it's like obviously the other kids that they had experimented on were not killed and they're they were just like moved and you know mm-hmm. they're still alive um no actually the first program was shut down the babies were burned okay yeah more burning babies more killing babies i just can't with it uh, why do people love to kill off babies in a show i don't anyways know. um yeah like that program gets shut down and then shortly after they, they started, started up being, again but like i just i don't know like i want to know i just want to know like okay the cia like in pop culture and in like society we know the cia is always trying to create a newer better faster stronger spy that can withstand whatever but it's like i want them to say that like i don't know i just feel like it wasn't like the plot wasn't laid out so much like that part of it like maybe we'll get that in season two but like i don't know i just want to know like why are they experimenting on babies and like what went wrong that they that they thought like the baby was the person that they needed to experiment experiment on like why aren't they doing this on grown adults like i just i don't know i i i like that kind of like psychology of it and like i don't know i i love a government conspiracy so i want to know what the conspiracy is it, it's not enough for me to just be like the cia is experimenting like duh i don't know Hmm. I don't know if they did Maybe that. that's just me. Yeah, I didn't really notice that. I thought it was very clear towards the end at least, which I thought was a really good build up. You know, you're trying to figure out what's going on and they reveal it at the end of the season. But like, I thought it was pretty clear. Like, okay, they were recruiting mothers to experiment on their embryos. Uh-huh. And then they were keeping the babies to see what would happen. That was very clear to me. And then the dad at some point was telling Hannah, yeah, it was genetic mutations that they were trying out, and your mom was... I don't think he ever has that conversation with her. I watched it pretty close together. Like, I, I watched it one day, and I'm pretty sure that happened at one point. When, no. When he was about to drop her off to her real dad. Spoilers. When he was about to drop her off to her real dad, like, when they were in the car, they were talking, and he was just like, yeah, like, this and that, and then you see the flashbacks. So she kind of knows. She doesn't know completely, but she knows, like, you're not my dad. There was Well, she knows that, but I just think, I don't know. Maybe I missed that scene. I don't know. I know exactly what scene you're talking about, but I don't feel like he really said what he needed to say. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know if they did that because they want to unfold more of the conspiracy in season two, or if they're just like, hey, we gave them enough, like, it's enough for y'all to just infer what's going on. Because I notice shows, they get, like, iffy and weird about that. They don't want to, like, make the viewer seem dumb. You get me? And they're just like, oh, they they can figure this out. I I don't want to, I don't know. I kind of like just things being laid out. Call me stupid. I no, don't know. <laughs> no, like I, I see I see what you mean though. That was like my one thing with the show. I was just like, I just wanted that moment with like the 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 person that was like leading the experiment or the the person in the CIA that was uh, in charge of all of this. I wanted that moment where I didn't see their face and they were talking about it. Or I wanted that moment for, I actually kind of wanted to see that moment for her. Because I felt like the, a lot of, her struggles throughout the show are who am i who do i belong to why am i here why do i feel so different and she's like you know um she's trying to like figure out her place in the world and her place within herself you know kind of like who am i and but that's what every teenager is going through even her little friends that she meets like yeah. none of them know who they are so yeah it's she's experiencing that in a different way but it is very characteristic of like a, a young adult coming of age yeah but i just feel like 
you never really saw her have that like I think for me what was missing is because she didn't really they didn't really have that conversation with her so she could be like okay this is why I'm like this so it never felt when when they at the end at the end of the season they realized that you know they've discovered that there are more people with these same kind of abilities that are still out there that are still the program is still going on so they go to search for them and she's like you know she wants to help them escape and live freely in the world mm -hmm. like what she has been able to do now and but it's like for me it's like that sense of like connection and liberation to them I don't know why she even has that because she knows that she's different. She has never met anyone like herself. But I feel like they didn't explain why she was different. So it's like that that like acceptance of it well, it's again, never that's, that's happened. Every kid. That's every I don't kid. know. Every kid knows they're different and they're trying to find their tribe. Everyone's trying to find their people. And when she sees that there's a possibility of finding her sisters, her tribe, her people, she's like, yeah, I have to help them. I have to, you know, do something. And when she does rescue that one girl, there is yeah. an immediate connection between them because they are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. You see? And she, yeah. She it's doesn't know why or how. She just knows that she's different and she's trying to find true people. That's what I got from that. And honestly, like, I wouldn't even call this a sci-fi show, a conspiracy no. show. Like, it's not about that. This is really a coming-of-age story. That's what I was going to say. It really yeah. is. I thought, I guess maybe that's my problem with mm -hmm. it. I want it to be a government conspiracy show, and mm -hmm. it was really like a teenage coming-of-age, which isn't really my genre. I love a government conspiracy, and I wanted that to be the focus, and it wasn't. It was really about her stepping out into the world and finding a place in it. Like, mm -hmm. I have, like... At first, when she meet, makes friends with this girl in the desert because they're both lost, um, and that friendship starts to continue, and the girl, like, they're having sleepovers, and, and they're going out to clubs, and they're drinking alcohol, and they're making out with boys. Like, I was like, why are we doing all of this? I thought it was pointless until I was like, oh, like, it isn't about her abilities or the experiment or any of that. It's really about yeah. this. It's about her learning who she is, learning like how to navigate the world what the world is like it's about her like finding out what is beyond the walls of the forest that she grew up in i got that vibe from the very beginning one of the first scenes is her getting her period and not yeah. understanding what it is what it is I know. god never told her it's I know. like okay this is about hannah this is about her and if you come at the show from the lens of like oh sci-fi government conspiracy you're not gonna get that scene like why is she getting her period and like not getting it why is this whole chain of events getting started because she likes a boy and she doesn't know like how yeah to, you know i guess that's the that was my issue is because i wanted it to be something that it wasn't but i loved it either way but i was just like who cares about this stupid girl and her issues with her family? But her getting to see, like, this is another girl that's my age that's kind of navigating the same thing. She likes a boy. He's attracted that she's attracted to him and how to navigate that and how to learn how to be a friend to somebody who's also being a friend to you, learning how to trust someone else, why you trust someone else. I think mm -hmm. the fact that she she trusted her and she was like, Oh, I can't trust anyone. One thing that her father always said is don't trust anyone. And one thing she says to her friend Sophie, she's like, I can't trust anyone. She's like, yeah, but you came to me because you trust me. So, and then Hannah's realizing like, oh yeah, like mm -hmm. that's true. So it's, it's interesting to see her kind of navigate all these different things that every teenage girl is going through. And it's just so funny how she so quickly is in the world. Yeah. Like, she's a member of, of the, the teenage drama of, like, I like a boy and my friend also likes that same boy. And But if you think about it, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like, kids are all experiencing the same thing. Nobody yeah. knows how life works. That's so true. So, although her friend Sophie has been in the normal world, she's still awkward. She still says the wrong thing sometimes. She still doesn't know how to navigate situations. So, Hannah fits right in. Yeah. Everyone's trying to figure it out. Yeah. It was interesting. I thought it was a great show. I told you guys I watched it all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. And that should be a testament because it was so hard for me to watch Marcella. I'll always compare it to Marcella. Like, it was so hard for me to get through that show and so easy for me to get through Hannah. So, 
I give it an A plus. My only thing is that I'm sad that spoiler alert they killed the dad. Yeah. The dad is so hot. I like, know, how are so they sexy. gonna replace the dad in season two? Like I need my eye candy. I need like my Well the the trailer for season two, she her okay, so she kinda like breaks out this one girl that is still at this camp as a trainee and she the girl follows her even though their entire life and regiment i thought it was very okay so their entire life and regiment is very restricted they're on they get a certain doses of medication they have very strict schedules they're being trained and raised to follow orders very specifically but this one girl she has like these inclinations to break rank and so that's why she is like so open when hannah gets there to escaping she the rest of them are like we can't break protocol like this is not what we're supposed to do and this other girl is like well i'm different and it's like clearly hannah is different also but i think it was interesting to see the parallels of their extreme rigidity with her own because Mm -hmm. she was being trained like in a forest isolated very routine like in a very similar way and she had those feelings of like breaking rank and that's why she disobeyed her father so i thought those kind of parallels that you saw at the beginning and at the end were really like nice. I thought it, mm-hmm. it it bonded them in a way that was, I was like, okay, this makes sense. Like she's yeah, finding sure. her equal in like so many ways, not just like her genetic abilities, but like personality. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. But what were you going to say about on the season two trailer? Okay, so the season two trailer, they, the other girls that are in this program, they've, they're, being transported to like a new facility and they're going they're gonna be start being activated and put out into the world and hannah oh. and the girl go back to the facility somehow so they're being mixed in with the rest of the trainees and so they have like new cast members come on new like person that's going to be in charge and it's the guy from the wedding date that Wait. plays the escort the hot one yes okay so i i see why they got rid of the dad then we are gonna have i can yes his name is dermot M- mulroney yeah i love him love him another daddy love him like he is i don't know he's like he's not like so hot but he's like sexy in a way i don't know if you've ever seen the wedding date with deborah messing like you know what i mean i love that movie i love him i was so excited to see him i was like oh my god yeah so after we finish recording we're gonna get our cinnamon buns and we're gonna watch okay, okay. <laughs> for sure because, yeah and I she goes that. blonde oh in yeah season I, was two. I love a hair change moment like I was wondering when that was going to happen because in the original Hannah movie, Hannah is blonde. So mm-hmm. I was wondering if they were going to do that. I'm yeah, glad she goes they are. blonde in season two. And like you just know, when a girl changes her hair, she changes her life. She like, knew that it's going to be, she's going to be different. She's, gonna, yeah. she's, she's just coming she's, different. She's coming different <laughs> in season two. I can't wait. So I think it's going to be interesting. I'm. It's going to be um, cool to see like how these girls like enter the world and navigate that art for themselves mm-hmm. also the rest of them and i think it's also interesting to see like even though they're being brought up in a way that's like so regimented like people are people like they're always gonna lie always gonna cheat steal like you know like human like what someone would say is like dysfunction or or like their flaws are always going to creep in. So it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the girls, even though they technically have been brought up to like follow orders, how they navigate being in the world. Because there's something about just being in society that corrupts you. Oh, for sure. So I think it's going to be very interesting because they're also so young. Like they're kids. Like you've turned these girls into like super spies and now you're going to send them off on missions to like navigate the world. Like, what are they gonna what's their cover baby prostitutes like i don't i just i don't know it's it will be interesting i'm super excited for season two yeah guys everyone go watch hannah you it's should on amazon prime it's great it was it was an easy watch like i watched so it in easy. two sittings because i started it like at 12 o'clock at night and like halfway through i was like it's 5 a.m <laughs> um so but it was super easy to watch really enjoyable and if you're like me just know that it's not about the conspiracy it's about hannah yeah, 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. For sure. And before we get into the tea, I want to mention another show. Okay. 
my TLC <laughs> regimen has <laughs> um, been marrying millions. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I've added marrying millions to my TLC regimen. Okay. And it is just such an interesting show. I watched a little bit of season one. It's basically a show covering couples that one of them is very wealthy and the other one is not. Mm -hmm. And they're deciding if they want to move forward in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So there are some old millionaires with some young hotties meeting the family. Uh -huh. There are some sugar mamas dating some baroque men. Mm -hmm. And I am just here for the dynamics and the laughs, and it's so good. I watched season one also, and it was very interesting, but I don't like the show. Because I have I have a real issue with, like, feeling like someone's taking advantage of someone else. And one of the couples is this really old, he's like an older guy. He's like in his 60s. Uh, I don't like that relationship. That's the only one I have a problem with. He's like 60 something and the girl is literally 22. 20. No, she's 20. Okay, 20. And she is just, you know, she's uneducated, oh, very she's, poor. She's 21. She might be like 22. Well, she's she, very young. She turned 22 in like the first episode of season two. Okay. Yeah. So she, you can, she's just like, she comes from a very like poor family, uneducated, like, you know, she, like this is a real come up for her, but I just feel like he's so old and so like he's, I think he's taking advantage of the fact that she doesn't have the family to back her up and just the life experience to be able to know how to navigate being with someone older like there's just something about like a young girl being a taken advantage of by an older man that is like very worldly that just doesn't sit right with me and I don't like watching that so I had a really yeah. huge problem with season one because of that one couple and I know they're on season two and I'm just like grossed out yeah so here's my thing with the show <laughs> it is hilarious though it's so funny and all the other couples are great i think uh, um the new couples that they added are so interesting as well that's one of the reasons i think you should watch the next episode that's coming they introduce like two new couples okay and they look so funny but my thing with age gaps and relationships is that when the person is under 25 and you're having like a 30 year age gap i think that's definitely taking advantage yeah of it's predatory it's very predatory and she looks really young as well yes she looks younger than me she looks like she's like 18 19 years old yes so that older man dating her is a little bit unsettling especially because you know like she's not She's not even a full person yet. Like, right. I can say whatever I want, but two years ago, I was not a full person. And I'm probably not going to be a full person until I'm 25. That's just, like, life. That's just a part of life. Yes. But there is another couple where the man is in his 70s and the girl, I think, is 26. And although they do look weird, it makes a little bit more sense. And I think she definitely knows what she's doing in that relationship. I just think when people have not finished, like, college and they don't have a career and they haven't really, like, lived yeah. on their own or had any like real life experience that just comes with age it's your that person is just disadvantaged like with their ability to navigate certain situations like yes you're an adult at 18 19 20 but you're just you just don't have the life experience that you have at 25 or 27 or 30 like I think back on myself at 21 and I thought I was like such an adult and I'm just like I was so naive and like the situations that I got myself in like it was difficult to navigate like some of the situations I, I found myself in like not having to navigate I would navigate them so much different now just because of life experience but you don't get there until you're older so I, I just think mm -mm, I don't like it yeah that's the only couple I have an issue with. All the rest of the couples are funny and super interesting to watch. So I highly recommend. Like I love the couple that Daddy Drew. And Daddy <laughs> Drew, you see, but like she graduated college. Yes. She was like doing her thing, and she wanted a relationship. Yes. Like that. I. They're I, not in season two though. They're not. No, I think they got married. Okay. They're like out living. What's life. her name? 
Uh, I don't know. Alexandra? Something. I don't I know. Don't remember her name? Daddy Drew and this one girl, but they were like, I don't know. They're. It's just they were a little bit closer in age. Mm-hmm. She had a little bit of life experience. She had. You know, it's just. I don't know. It's different. Yeah, definitely different. Um, but yeah. there's one couple I have to talk about it. Um, <laughs> oh, you're gonna talk about it. <laughs> I have to talk about it. So I watched part of the episode with her, and there was it's like, okay, so it's this black couple. The man is very wealthy, and the woman is what is she, a social worker? Um, something I think she like works that. for a nonprofit, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And he made his money how? Really? Wine. Oh, wine. Wine. so they're sitting down there she is very religious so they haven't like had sex or any sort of like sexual intimacy in their relationship and they've been together for two years two years and he's like totally fine with it but she is like a secret like none of his family know about her and they want to get married he wants to like does he want to actually propose he wants her to move to the East Coast before he considers moving forward in the relationship. But she's like, you need to tell your family about us. Yeah. But, and I don't want to generalize because I know this sounds bad, but the second I saw him, I literally said, is he gay? <laughs> he is very effeminate. <laughs> yes. And like, and like, obviously there's no like, there isn't like a... We know sexuality is a spectrum and you can be straight and like act like gay men would usually do or that you could be gay and act super like butch, you know, exactly. but like he just strikes me as very effeminate and I'm just like, <laughs> is this a closet situation? And then someone else walked in the room, my, our cousin, and she was like, is he gay? And I was like, okay, it's not just me. And then I was listening to two other <laughs> podcasts and both of those hosts were like, this man is gay. And yeah. so now I'm like, okay, I know I'm not crazy. And I know I'm not like trying to stereotype him. He's just very feminine. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. You can be feminine and still a straight man. Heterosexual. I think he might be in the closet. Or I think he might be bi. Okay, so here's my theory. I have a theory that he's bi. Okay. And he's keeping their relationship a secret because Someone, he doesn't want people to tell her that he has dealt with men before. Yes. she's also very religious. She's very religious. That I that's a good theory because that and that's I can see that. Yeah. I can see him his like last relationship having been with a man and someone in his family knows and he doesn't want to bring her around because then that person's gonna be like, Wait, what what about the dude? And yeah. then she's gonna be like, What do you mean? What about the dude? <laughs> you know, like because then she might be like, I don't want to be with a bisexual man. That's a very real thing for a lot of women. Um, heterosexual a, women. Yeah. I have a tweet. Okay. That, that just, it describes the situation because I don't like relationships that are a secret. And I, I don't saw, like it either. I saw a tweet today that reads, keep me low key. And I swear to God, I'll cheat on you. And that's that on that. <laughs> yeah. I it's don't- shady. Keep me low key, and I swear to God, I'll cheat on you. Yeah, like why am I a secret? You're I don't either know. Either cheating on me, and I need to cheat back, or there's something else weird or shady going on. Yeah, so, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, but the show is kind of good. Just know that there is a problematic couple that you might be uncomfortable watching. Yeah, a little bit uncomfortable. For sure. And I don't like that other couple with the broke man and that really <laughs> rich girl. Like he bothers me. It's not. It to me, it's not a, even about like she's very wealthy and she they live in Vegas and she is like a wealthy um, real, estate. real estate agent and he works construction and he just like lives off of her and I don't like it and like <laughs> <laughs> call me sexist, call me whatever old fashioned I don't know I just I don't like that I just feel like he. He still works construction and, like, takes care of himself, but he lives with his parents. It look away. He lives with his parents. He he doesn't have any money to do anything with her. Like, he can't even pay for dinner if they go out on a date. Uh, she They went to this charity event with her and her friends, and he was like, oh, let me go get drinks. And she was like, can I have money? It's like, sir, you can't even pick up a round of drinks? Like... You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Her friends were all there meeting him for the first time. And he's just like, I don't know. He's just like, ugh, to me. It's a weird vibe. It looks away 
but I think they're also they're they're a funny couple to watch. It's it's not uncomfortable. It's not as no, uncomfortable as because like, they're similar the in ages. Like, yeah, and I understand. Like she's like you know most of the men that I have dated in the past have been really successful, but like complete assholes. And I can totally understand that. Like a mm -hmm. lot of rich guys, they want to like cheat on you. They want to do all these things. And it's like, I can understand her just wanting like a simple guy that loves her genuinely. Yeah. And she's obviously found that in him. I just don't like that he can't even buy her a drink at a bar. It's a class thing because I'm sure he can afford it. This is a money can't buy you class moment. He needed to like fake it till he made it. Yeah. And uh, he needed to look put, good. Put, he needed to put on his big boy pants and yeah. act like the man in front of her friends mm -hmm. just to at least shit show face like save face like yeah i just didn't like that it was just like very classless and i just felt like have you no pride it's the pride for me you know yeah and then in season two he's like begging her to go back to him and it's just like uh, oh season two they're broken up so hey you won't have that problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she's dating other people but Love i that. think they're still like they they be hanging out. They be messing around on the side. Yeah, I like so that. Okay. we'll see how that plays out this season. Interesting. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that to you guys because I'm loving it. Okay, and something <laughs> I actually wanted to mention that I didn't mention last week was that we had a special episode and we had a guest on. I did a solo oh, episode with my friend Alicia. And we got into all things Real Housewives. We got into the current seasons of Real Housewives of New York, Potomac, and Beverly Hills. And we just did a deep dive because, as we know, Selena does not do her Real Housewives homework as much as I would like her to, which is not her fault. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is what it is. And so a fellow Real Housewives stan came on the podcast and we got into it. And it was just so fun. I really liked the episode. So thank you so much to Alicia to coming on. And we just did like a podcast swap because I was on her podcast and we were talking about my dating life in quarantine, my dating life out of quarantine, and I gave some really good gems. So check her podcast out as well. I have to go listen to that. Um, Yeah, and all of her information is in the description box of that episode, but it was really good, and I just wanted to mention that. So check that episode out. All right, guys, so let's get into the tea. Yes, so our first story today mm -hmm. is a little bit of... What we talked about last week, I mentioned that Miley Cyrus was going to be on the Call Her Daddy podcast, and the episode was a hit. It was so good, okay? <laughs> I love Call Her Daddy, and I love Miley, and I was really expecting her to be wild and crazy since it was a sex podcast, but she was actually the opposite of that. The okay. interview was basically about her focusing on her career right now and rebuilding her life post Liam and the fallout of their divorce. Okay. Yeah. Which Did they have a great. bad divorce? They didn't have a bad divorce, but I think in that breakup, she definitely lost a little bit of herself because people mm. forget that they were together for over 10 years on and off. I know. I heard from the, the, the episode that she had lost her virginity to him. I didn't yes. know that. Yeah, and in the moment she lied and she told him that she wasn't a virgin, but indeed she was, and that was the first man that she had slept with. So I can only imagine the mental repair that has to be done after you finally are done Leave with a relationship, relationship like that. Yeah. yeah. So she talked about that. She actually gave some great tips for getting a word breakup. I was like, wow, Miley, I wasn't expecting this. You're actually like so insightful. Hmm. And also she did talk about sex a little bit, but her position was that I'm more focused on my career right now and rebuilding my life. And to all of you women who are also doing that, like, don't feel ashamed if you can't talk about sex, if you're not this wild and crazy girl. Because, yeah, even though I am on the Call Her Daddy podcast, I can be authentic and say what's really happening with me. And the truth is, like, I'm not having a lot of sex right now. And I was just like, wow. Hmm, interesting. Go, Miley. I heard she dropped a single in a video. She did. Did and you I, listen to it? No, I haven't listened to me it. Either. I haven't seen the video, but apparently it's iconic and super cute. Oh, really? Like the visuals. I don't know how good the song is. I wonder what the direction is. I just feel like she changes directions so often. That's that Sagittarius energy. And Coming I'm just different. like, <laughs> ma'am, like, can we get, like, what? I need some consistency from Miley. Like, I know that. 
like post bangers like that was when I was actually into her but now I'm just like what is what does her music even sound like like what is it Miley is one of those What's people that loves to reinvent herself and this song is definitely um like a traditional pop song though hmm this is a traditional pop maybe okay. a little bit of electro pop okay so yeah interesting i thought it was a great interview and i was actually gonna tell you to listen to it but i forgot okay so yeah you should listen to it and it's also on youtube you can watch it oh i'll do that i like mm -hmm. to see people's faces yeah guys watch us on youtube watch us on youtube <laughs> <laughs> i think our videos are like i don't know i just think it's so much better like i've been listening to a lot of podcasts just like catching up on stuff that i had been ignoring during quarantine and anything i can watch on youtube i watch i prefer to watch it on youtube i just like to see someone's face when they're saying yeah. something i gotta admit i do prefer visual podcasts yeah so yeah watch us um okay so my first story is chrissy Teigen is pregnant oh my god yay yes baby, baby number, number three, three. And she found out because she was going in to have her breast reduction surgery and she had to do just like a routine pregnancy test and before surgery and they were like, you're pregnant. And she was like, ah! That happens to so many <laughs> women. They're about to get a cosmetic procedure and they're like, actually, you can't because you're pregnant. And we're like, oh my gosh. Well, she was able to have the surgery. Oh, really? I, I think so. I she am had, very surprised. She got the surgery, I think. Usually they won't not. let you. They won't let you do the procedure if you're pregnant. I don't know. I thought she actually had the surgery. I don't know. Something Maybe not. To, to look at. But she announced it in um, John Legend's newest video, and she showed the baby bump, and it's so cute. I'm happy for her. She's been having, like, fertility issues, like, getting pregnant again, so great for them. Congratulations to them. Woo, woo, woo. Another piece of tea this week is podcast drama, I guess you could call it. <laughs> um... <laughs> The No Jumper podcast had Selena Powell and her friend Eliza as guests. Uh -huh. And if you guys don't know what No Jumper is, which I know you don't either, it is a rap and rap culture podcast. So hosted by a white man, is he? Yes, but like okay. he he has inserted himself into the culture. Like he's done that years ago. Oh, he used to be who like is he? He's he used to be a BMX um guy. Uh huh. A BMX writer, whatever that's called. He would do tricks and stuff and compete <laughs> uh -huh. in the X Games, whatever. And then he was always into rap, very much into rap, lived in LA, had rapper friends, opened up a streetwear shop. Mm -hmm. And then he just randomly started podcasting because, oh, I know why he started podcasting because he was managing XXX Tentacion. Oh. And then he started interviewing all these SoundCloud rappers and all these new rappers that were coming into the game as well as big rappers that he had relationships with interesting so yeah he's relevant and he's like a part of the culture i've literally never heard of this podcast see this man this for until <laughs> i saw these videos that we're about to talk about so i am a a regular listener of the podcast you listen to some really interesting podcasts like we have such <laughs> different tastes i know maybe it's age like i don't know but it's just so interesting he just interviews people that don't usually get interviewed. Mm. That's what it is. Because they're not big enough or... Not... Sometimes because they're not big enough. Like, he interviewed um, X before he got big, um, Smoke Perp, like, I think... Who were the main people? Like, Kodak Black, he interviewed, I think, before he got big. Um, what was this other guy's name? Um... Lil Yachty, he interviewed before he got big. Like, that, um, 21 Savage, like, that era of SoundCloud oh. rappers, he interviewed all of them, and he was, like, a big part of putting them on. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you for the history. You're welcome. And then he also, <laughs> his uh, girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, and now baby mama, uh -huh. Lena the Plug, she was, like, one of the first private Snapchat OnlyFans girls. So then he is also branched out to interviewing porn stars, and I think oh, one of his yeah. biggest interviews was he interviewed Stormy Daniels and they talked about Trump. Oh, yeah. interesting. And like all these, all of these porn star girls that are like in the rap videos, like. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, so these two girls that came on the show are like video girls. Yes. Selena Powell is now an OnlyFans girl, but okay. before she was just a professional hoe. Okay. She was known for hooking up with celebrities and exposing them. Okay. Like Superhead. 
I don't know why you keep I like I understand the reference but I just feel like that's the only other professional hoe like in the rap culture that I that's can think kinda of. True. That's kind of true. Okay. Because like, that was all she did. Like, that's true. She was also a video girl. But, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know she I mean. was a professional. Yeah. Okay. So the yell and the friend <laughs> came on the podcast. They were spilling the tea. I'm very Jamaican in this episode. Can you just tell? <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah. They came on the podcast and. Selena Powell was exposing T on Tory Lanez because he had her beat up. Yes, Tory Lanez is toxic, I'm convinced. And then she talks about Megan Thee Stallion saying that she heard on the streets that her and Tory were hooking up and they were in a domestic violence situation and that's why he shot her, but she doesn't want to snitch. And then she talked about a couple of the guys that she was hooking up with, but the main tea that came out of this episode was the friend yes everyone was talking about her story of hooking up with seven, seven. nba players at one time mm-hmm. and then her weird experience with trey, trey songs, songs which i'm also convinced is toxic at this point very yeah. toxic um you heard about the trey songs allegations i you? okay so just a little backstory trey songs there have been like stories that have come out about him in the past of him just being like weird and creepy there's videos of him actually with meg stallion like in a car trying to like force liquor down her throat when she's already like half passed out like just very like creepy vibes you know he had that incident with kiki palmer like i think that was like two years ago Mm -hmm. when she came forward and was like you know i was i went to a party that he was like throwing in an apartment and then all of a sudden they were starting to shoot a music video And I was just very uncomfortable. I didn't know how to navigate it. And he like was very intimidating and basically tried to use like, like leverage his like fame and power to get me to go along with something that I wasn't, I didn't sign up for and like I wasn't comfortable with. And she, you know, she, she, the story goes that she like ran and hid herself in a closet and to like compose herself. And then he was just like, what's your problem? It was just very intimidating and uncomfortable for her. And then there were also rape allegations against him. Yes. Um, so this is just like, you know, we've heard these stories in the past. So now this girl came out and she's like, you know, like he, the story that she told was that he basically just loves like rounds and rounds and rounds of sex and basically uses girls as just like live sex dolls. But he didn't let her leave. And wouldn't let her leave. And she's heard this from other people that have had sex with him as well. And like he was like holding her purse hostage and he was like i'll let you go when i'm gonna ready you to go and she was like well when's that gonna be and he just like wouldn't give her an answer and she was there for days and it was just kind of like a very weird situation and so that's just really fucking creepy right Trey. yeah super um, creepy and yeah she was fine with it she didn't feel violated in any way but it kind of confirmed what the streets have been saying yeah, and things have been saying. saying and one of the things i saw on twitter yesterday when this was all coming out was that you know everybody's like oh now we have to cancel trey songs like trey songs is done after this and it's just like a lot of criticism was like oh now that a white woman says this like we're we're Ooh. we're now gonna co-sign this like now we should believe it when kiki palmer came out two years ago and said something along this line and she had a, a a case go to court over rape it was just like you know that was one of the criticisms that i saw interesting don't know what the validity of of that kind of argument is but i, I can understand it um you know that's just like a general note on pop culture it's like a lot of black women they come forward with stories of of their rape or their sexual mis- uh, sexual assault or sexual harassment and it's not taken seriously but when white women come forward it's it's seen as valid um honestly i found the fact that this story got picked up so random and weird like me people too. really have nothing better to do because honestly i watched the podcast because i was like oh another selena powell episode let's see what she has to say this time about her messiness and i just watched it and then later on in the day my boyfriend was like oh did you hear about this and i was like huh like i was literally watching it this morning people are talking about this you know about no jumper and then you knew about it <laughs> yeah and, I was and like, I... <laughs> why is this one of the stories on the blogs like why is this mainstream that's yeah. so strange everybody was talking about this it was it was the only thing i talked about in all of my 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 group chats like, that is literally. so weird to me. <laughs> the video was posted like three different times. Like I was just like, 
I don't understand what's going on here with this 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 story. Things go viral for such strange reasons. Like No Jumper <laughs> has gone viral several times, but this is like one of the most surprising to me. Interesting. Yeah. So strange. People people just have nothing better to do. The smallest yeah, I think like so. scandalous thing comes out and they fixate on it. I think that's what's happening right now. Symptom of the Rona. I think so. I feel like there's no news going on right now. Yeah. For like sure. even we were talking about preparing for this episode and we're like I was like what are we talking about like I just felt like nothing's happening like yeah we're in a weird place again like remember in the beginning of quarantine when like nothing was happening I feel like we're there again yeah we're in a weird much. like nothing's happening again phase mm -hmm. weird very strange but to bring to go back to Meg Thee Stallion mm -hmm. a little bit she posted pictures of her gunshots um because I don't know if you saw maybe last week there were all these threads about her there was she was like she posted a video when she was dancing on her instagram and someone was like how could she have gotten shot and be dancing oh, and standing yeah and so then everybody was of course there's going to be speculation like she didn't get shot i want to see the foot da, 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 da. even i had a friend in our group chat be like i need to see the foot <laughs> i need it. to see the <laughs> foot i'm <laughs> like, dead literally oh and that's so funny i was just like it's just like weird it's like these weird threads that catch on and like all of a sudden they're being like talked about everywhere and so she, i guess she caught wind of that and so she actually posted the pictures of her a video of her in the hospital of them examining her her feet before she went into surgery and then her like stitches and stuff mm. since then um and i just feel like that's so awful that you feel the need to have to post that like i okay so i've mentioned this before i don't know if i've mentioned this but i got into a really bad car accident years ago and so i have very strong feelings about like hospitals and doctors and like all of that and how people navigate like healing and like scars and being asked about injur injuries and stuff um and I just feel like it's I always think it's so tacky when someone's like in the hospital and they're posting pictures like from the hospital bell it's like come on just take your drugs and like chill out mm -hmm. like this is weird like I think that's really weird and I think I just think people are constantly looking for sympathy and it's like you're a freak like yeah like one that's weird okay so that's my one thing but then I just feel like how in how toxic is social media that this woman who is healing from obviously a, a tumultuous situation if those if the word on the street from this girl is true if they were in some sort of like obviously something happened we don't really know we've heard that it was Tori that shot her if that's true and they were like in some sort of like sexual or romantic relationship like how traumatizing is that and then how toxic is social media that she now feels like she has to post her body in the state that she's in to dispel rumors about the validity of what happened to her we all know she was shot we all know she had surgery like that should be enough and i just i just feel so bad for her because it's just it could it's so toxic and like mentally draining to to heal from traumatic injuries that to, for her to be in this position in the public eye and not being for anything to be questioned, I just think is like so gross and I feel awful for her. I feel so bad for her. I thought it was super toxic as well. And when I saw the post, I was like, oh, okay, I guess she's posting the foot. Yeah. And I didn't understand the reason behind it. The fact that people were alleging that she was lying and look at each other. Like, who does that? <laughs> right. I feel like Jesse Smollett, though, he really <laughs> said the tone a bad precedent of, he set a bad precedent of people lying about like insane things that happen to them <laughs> so maybe it's a symptom of that as well maybe i mean i just think you know people are really vile on the internet and i just feel like celebrities really need to take a picture a page out of beyonce's book like ignore 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 like if I was ever famous, like, you wouldn't hear from me. Like, I would let you bitches think whatever you wanted to. Like, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't address anything. Like, you would have to just speculate. Like, because I'm, I'm not going to, like, maybe it's because of my age and maybe it's just some of the life experiences that I have, but I just don't have to justify anything to anybody. Yeah. And, like, I just, I hope that she gets to a place, like, with the injury and the accident 
that she doesn't feel like she needs to explain it all the time people are gonna constantly ask questions like the next time she has to do like press it's like that's all everyone's gonna talk about and I just I hope she gets to the I hope she has that moment with her publicist beforehand where they're just like they have a, a standard answer and it's like we're not talking about it like I just I don't want her to have to complete have to re-explain this mm -hmm. I don't like think people talk too much on social media. Yeah. After my accident. Yeah. After my accident, I mean, I've had to tell like complete strangers in the most ridiculous scenarios what happened to me because they're just so fucking nosy. And I just, people are just so invasive. Like, everybody needs to learn some fucking decorum. Like, <laughs> <laughs> everyone needs to learn some manners yeah right I agree. it's like it's none of your business like if you see someone with like a disability or something that's like like an overt like i don't know like scarring or anything like that like why are you asking them what happened to you like it's just so invasive it's like I'm i don't know you know why Oh, I've started to, but then that starts a whole other thing. Because it's like, once you give somebody a story, then you're, they want to know more. It's like, that just opens up the floodgate. I remember one time, somebody was like, oh, how'd you get that scar? And I was like, oh, I was in a skiing accident. They were like, oh, really? What mountain did it? And I was like, oh, what my mountain? God. <laughs> like, oh, I ski all the time. Did it? Oh, what happened? Did and I was what just like, hell? oh, my God. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Because I have a scar, too, on my chest from a surgery when I was younger yeah and um when I used to work in my old job as a bartender people would ask me about the scar and I would just be like oh I gotta stop <laughs> <laughs> and they would be like oh my gosh like really are you okay like what happened like what what's the, the, the story now and, they want to know the story no but I would be very brief I'd be like wrong place wrong time I can't do that hard I life and then people <laughs> would feel bad for me and sit me more <laughs> I mean, I think that works, but like, I think in my situation, like, it just, it's so different. Like, okay, so I had spinal surgery and it's like, I don't, I can't move my neck. So I, people, I've been in like, I've been at somebody's like security gate to go to their house mm -hmm. and the guy that's like just taking my ID is like what happens to your neck because what? I like reached over weird to get something out of my purse, like to get my license out of my wallet. He noticed that I didn't move normally. And so he was like, what happened to your neck? It's like, are you going to let me in the gate or not? Like, <laughs> I don't need to explain this to you. Okay, that's so, a little extra. So, but I get the question constantly. Like, if you spend a lot of time with me out, you would see how much I get asked about it. Are you like, serious? It's, it's actually ridiculous to the point that now I'm just like, it doesn't, I, like, I just, I just ignore people at this point because I'm just like, it's not your fucking business. <laughs> like, people are really nosy. That's weird. Okay, so... This like, is a weird tangent, If but you're one of those people, just don't do that. Learn but, some yeah. manners, people. Like, <laughs> learn some manners. Have some decorum. And mind your fucking business. <laughs> Punto. <laughs> Period. I'm dead. Yeah. But, okay. yeah. So, Meg, I hope you're healing. And I hope I'm sending you positive vibes. Positive and vibes. And I hope you Meg. don't expect even though I do want to know what happened like I just want to know like should we hate Tori I think we should he got Selena Powell beat up as well and although like okay we don't care about Selena Powell whatever like anyone who is doing all of this to, to women, women is a problem yes yeah you're right I okay I hate him yeah I don't like it's official anymore. yeah well, why are men like this like that's no, a whole other thing. I just can't. It's like it's like you want to root for them, and then they they're just awful. <laughs> <laughs> My friends and I have this debate every week. Do men deserve things? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they do because like they're good men, but like. I think the evidence points to no. <laughs> I think on a, like if we had to take a class average, more of them are shitty. So I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> it's rough out here. That's all I gotta say. Anyways, <laughs> hope you guys liked our episode. Thank you so much for listening on to all of our very weird tangents today. Oh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe to our show wherever you are listening on podcast or on youtube spotify yes please leave us a rating and review um we definitely need some ratings i feel like people are listening the numbers say that you're listening but you're not leaving us any ratings or reviews people so 
go ahead and interact with us you know give us yeah. engagement because we see it we and see i know it. like people are not motivated to like either read a review or like comment like a video subscribe on youtube because they think we're not going to see it but like we look <laughs> we look and we respond also every single comment or like email that we've gotten we respond to so mm -hmm. you actually do like we'll hear from back from us yeah um so go ahead and leave us a rating review tell us something nice always and thank you for listening we'll be back next friday with another episode of the tv and t podcast bye bye you guys